Hi, Stefina. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Sunny? I'm very, very good. Thank you. Uh, I wanted you on here just before I wanted to welcome everyone and say welcome to Rewriting the Script. This is episode one. Yeah. So exciting. Um, this is really just a platform for me to speak to other female creatives that are creating and working in this industry in South Africa and really shaping the landscape of it. I know Safina and I were speaking earlier and what we really um, thought was that it would be so, it, this would have been so beneficial for me if I was coming up in the industry and had a platform like this to be able to speak and discuss um, and learn from. Um, so our very first guest is the incomparable Stefina Zwane. I was busy um, moving around. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Is that good? Yeah, no, you no. look good. You look good. The skin's popping. You're doing things. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, so I want to do a brief intro on who you are for those that don't know, although I don't think there's any who don't. I sent your photo to my mom and she's like, I'm like, no, mom, I don't think you do. I don't, I don't think you do. She's, <laughs> um, Stefina, uh, started her career in acting and then moved to sort of behind the scenes. You can see her and recognize her from so many amazing shows like Backstage, Gazlam, Heartlines. Scandal, Uskrufno Sexy. Um, you've also directed two feature films, Love and Guaito, you were the writer and director, and also um, Baby Mamas, which was a huge box office hit. Uh, and you've traveled to so many festivals. I was gonna list them all, but there's actually so many. Let's just say that, <laughs> that your work has taken you around the world, which is so, so amazing. Um, <laughs> And now you've moved into the world of commercials, which is so great. We're going to get to that. So really, if I were to like encapsulate what you do, I would say a company director, writer, director, filmmaker, and producer. Yes, even though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, I, I've done all those things in, in my short career mm -hmm. at one point or another. Um, okay. And I think all of them needed to be done and they've all taught me something, but I think I've found some of my favorite things. <laughs> okay. Um, times, which is so, definitely directing and writing. Okay. That's awesome. That leads me to my first question. Cause I know that like with the work that we do, you end up becoming very interdisciplinary, like multi-skilled because you have to in order to survive. So for me is that, of all your titles, which ones are your favorite? Yeah, definitely the directing. Okay. Um, okay. And the writing. But I think I love the directing more um, because it's, it, it means the thing is happening. <laughs> mm, mm, when mm. you're writing, the characters have, are not fully formed yet. You are, the beauty of it is that you, you, you have the privilege of creating these people that some you've met some you've never met and you have to give dialogue and there's a whole you know there's a whole and I'll, I'll say spiritual journey even with that which is special mm -hmm. in its own way and okay. then the, the directing now the thing is happening your cast is here your crew is here and you it's a different energy as well and it brings it, it forces you to bring a different person to the table but it also allows you to bring out things from people, sometimes things mm -hmm. that they didn't even know they could do. And that's so, when you find the magic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So of all your titles, which one have you worked the hardest for to earn oh, that title? The direct one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and which one came the easiest? The easiest? I don't, I don't think any of them would have come easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, by easy you mean like the, your natural affinity yeah which one which one did you stumble upon or or kind of come into and like oh this makes sense that that wasn't as challenging perhaps as maybe like the directing was look i think <laughs> i think i've stumbled on <laughs> a lot of it mm. <laughs> but i mean when i 
came into into the entertainment industry, I was very young. Mm. Mm. I think that first stumble of stumbling into the industry allowed for all of this to happen. Mm. Mm. So when I first went to my first audition, which was for Crazy, and I ended up being one of the chosen as one of the presenters, and it opened up this world to me that I never could have imagined. Um, I never could have imagined that I'd be a director when I, like when I was 15 and starting out. Uh, had I not been in the industry, I would not have known that that's an option. Mm. Mm. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, it, it would have always been a thing that I longed to do. But I, if, if I hadn't been in the industry that early, I'd, I, I would not have been able to articulate what it is that I want to do. So it's so think, interesting. Yeah. So sorry. So getting into the industry at that young age allowed me into a world I'd never fully imagined. I think at that age, all you can see yourself doing is being on TV and doing nice, crazy things. Yeah. 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 Done that. Then I was like, okay, now what? Then I was like, okay, I want to act. And then I acted. And then after acting, I was like, okay, this is great, but what else can I do? So it's allowed me to explore a wide variety of the talents I've been thankfully blessed with. Mm. Because most of the time when I've thought, okay, now I want to write. I want to explore writing or writing films. Because I've always, I think the first thing I ever did was write. I've always been a writer since I was since I was a little, little girl, I was always reading and writing. Okay. It was just, you know, calling it or calling it, I'm writing a script mm -hmm. or, you know, giving it a, a, a professional name that was different. But I, I think I've enjoyed every little bit of the streets and the lanes that I've been on because they've all taught me Lots of things that I now use to. That's so interesting that you say that, like, you, you didn't really see that directing was an option or anything like that. I feel very much the same way. I had no idea, like, the plethora of things that lay, like, beyond just performance. Um, and, 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 I, and I think that, like, what we're not told from a young age is that there are so many options. Um, mm. And that's, that's, why, that's why a platform like this for me is so important because if someone had told me like, look, you can be a writer, a director, a DOP, a line producer, there's um, so many jobs that you could do um, that you are equipped for and that you are skillful, like that, that's an option for you. Yeah. I think it's, it's uh, a lot of the time when I'm working as, as a director, I have some, a lot of the cast members and some of the crew going, oh, wow, this is the first time I'm working with a black woman director. And then I'm like, hey, boo, how many years have you been in this industry? Mm -hmm. But it's the truth. Um, I think there's a lot of talented people out there. There's just not enough opportunities for all of them. Okay, so it's interesting that you say that because for me, the, the, being a black female director, I started my career in directing. Um, and I really want to pick your brain and kind of unpack if our situations, you know, kind of are similar or what your experience has been. Um, I find that as a black female director or um, even in charge in any of the head creative roles that you have to sort of explain your choices and justify, justify your vision. Whereas I think our male counterparts are just like, you know what, we're going to put the camera here and we're going to have a plane fly and then you're going to pass out and then someone's going to run through and then that's going to be a wrap, you know? And, and so for me, it was interesting to kind of get into the role that I've been working for for so long and, 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 and have to be like, no, I, I have a plan, I promise. <laughs> Look, mm. you are spot on. It, it's, it's not unique to you or your environment. Um, I think the minute you're a woman and you're on set, uh, let alone a black woman, you, like everybody else, we're all creatives, right? And you have, a, you have an idea, but you, I, I think people do it without realizing. Mm -hmm. 
Because you mm. think it ought to be painted red. And then if, it, if I was a guy, they'd be, the painter would be there with red paint. Or they'd be like, okay, I'm going to go get red paint. I don't have it. I'm going to go buy it. If you're a woman and you say, I want the door to be red, they go, are you sure you don't mean maroon <laughs> or pink? <laughs> and just Girl. Wait. You, so Girl. then you can guess yourself, you're like, wait, hold on. Did I say red or maroon or pink? Mm-hmm. Like, that I do want. Then you, that's when you get to a point where you then have to justify yourself. You're like, okay. So the reason I asked for red is because my actress is wearing black. And what we are doing symbolizes, you know, you have to get deep <laughs> in mm. it. Mm. So I've found that that happens quite, I, I don't think I've been in a situation where that doesn't happen. I've been very fortunate as well to work, especially in commercials. My, my, my commercials producer gets it. Uh, yeah. If I say I'd like to do this and this and this, he goes, okay, cool. He, he, he understands what a director is. And where he feels like, eh, eh, now maybe here you might be losing the plot. Oh, not even losing the plot. I, he feels maybe if you looked at it like that, this product or this, this shot would be even better. Okay. He'll push you to it, but he'll never go, no, you're wrong. Why don't you rather do it like this? Mm. He's got He's got, I, I say to him all the time, you have a gift of bringing out the best in people because he'll go, oh, that's great. Red is great, Steph. But have you thought of having it as red and black stripes? What do you think that would do? And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm going for the whole red and black thing. So red and black stripes on a door. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so he brings out the best as opposed to just, because I find that people question you just for the sake of questioning you. Mm. And for me, that wastes time. It's like, guys, I honestly, we don't have that time. I, don't, yeah. I can't explain my every move, my every thought, my every shot. If I say put the camera here, just put it. And then let's yeah. go. You know? Yeah. So you almost also have to have this persona. And thank goodness. Like, this is why the acting came in. That's why I had to first start with the acting. Because I love okay. <laughs> so you can play the role. Yeah, I have to be, you know, you have, even when on days when you don't feel like being stern and you you almost have to put it on so that people can see, that, okay, this is not the time to question her. Let's just do it and move on. Um, which is unfortunate um, because it wastes, for me, it just wastes so much time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because at the end of the day, they have to do it. You're the director. And not only afterwards they go, hey, Marawaiti, that was a good, that was a good call. It's like, no, I, this, this, this didn't just happen. Did yeah. It? yeah. It's tiring. It's tiring. Oh my gosh, it's tiring. Yeah, I, I remember being on set kind of when I first started directing and I was about 21, 22 years old. I was very young and, and quite insecure. I'd just come out of school. And, um, I, and I always know that it was really real because I used to go to the bathroom and then I'd switch to his closet and then look at myself in the mirror and be like, John, I get my boy. Ne? Let me tell you, let me tell you what's not going to happen is you're not going to be the girl who's crying on set. You're not going to throw a fit. You're not going to raise your voice. You're going to be stern and direct and know what you want. But, and the converse of that is that I feel like because you kind of come in as a female on set, um, your preparation is so much, is so extensive because you know they're waiting to catch you out. Yes. Yes. I think you, you walk on that set um, no, already knowing that apart from being questioned, or, you know, they're just waiting. Mm. So that mm. go, oh, she's not a real direct. I told you. So what, what I've had to learn is, mm. I think it's also because, you know, maturity and growing older is understanding that I say to people, I, you know, I don't have to know everything. There's people that uh. are people who are on the set who should know, who probably know way more than I do. I'm okay with the information that I know. What I don't know, I don't know. That's why there's the rest of the crew and the cast. 
whatever mm. I don't be here to bring. And um, that's given me so much peace and has <sighs> away so much pressure. I don't need to know everything. So if somebody, if I happen to be asked something about wardrobe, I'm like, oh, that's a very good question. Let's go find out what the HOD says. Here we go. Me about we life. Go. Yeah. yeah. Your idea. I don't know how to bring it to life. Let's go find out how to do it. So I've, that's given me so much peace. It's taken away the pressure because what I realized earlier on was you, you, there's so much pressure to know everything, to know all the technical terms, to know mm. all the... Hi, man. One day I was like, yeah, Eman, but wait. Yeah. The gaffer doesn't know all the technical terms for the makeup department. <laughs> so, why must I know? Yes. Who said, who said that? And also, it's just, it's too much. I'm just here to bring a vision to life. To learn each and every single one of those technical terms and to learn each and every single way of how to do things. Mm -mm. Then mm -hmm. that means only four people. This is a teamwork effort. It just so happens that I'm the one who's leading the team and the vision. Yeah. But everybody that's here needs to know how to make things happen. So I remember on, on Baby Mamas, mm. what the script, the, so there's a scene which I wrote that said we need a lift. <laughs> Tony walks into the lift. Yes. And the, lo the final location that we found and that we liked didn't have a lift. So I, was, I called the art director and I was like, okay, so we've got a dilemma. The problem, it is, we need a lift because it is in the script. Mm. So how are we going to do this? It was not for me to figure it out. It was... It's an, that's a different department. It's somebody else's problem. And he was like, sure, if you're going to need a lift and there's no lift in this building, that means build one. I was like, ah, that's a nice idea. That's the guy. <laughs> that's the and, guy, yeah. <laughs> so I've learned to go, ah, me, I don't know. Let's go ask the, the, the experts on that specific question. Athena, that's such a gift. That's such a gift for yourself that like you've completely not worn this. You know, um, I, I, I feel even across the board in, in many industries, black women, like every, every, every one of us, you get your degree and then you must get your master's and then a double master's. And then a, you just always have to have the education behind you and confidence behind you and talent and skill and people skills. And looks and brains. And yeah. it just... It just it, got to a point where I was like eh, eh, man. They, I'll never pass this test because I'm also a perfectionist I get yeah I'm a perfectionist so I, I, and I, need, I needed to to start enjoying what I'm doing because if you're a perfectionist and there's so much you need to know because every day there's there's new things you you, you have to learn and I'm, I'm I'm gonna learn those things but I also need to understand that I I don't know everything and that's okay. It doesn't make mm. me a lesser director. It doesn't make me a lesser creative. It just means mm. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm privileged enough to be in an environment that has hired somebody who knows. Who knows exactly what that is. Okay. Mm. Is that the energy then that you try and cultivate on your sets? Because I watched a lot of uh, the promo you kind of did for baby mamas and like how you guys did that. And it was you and your partner and, and it was female led for, for female leads. I mean, it's insane. Right. Um, yeah. And so I was like, this, this is like a party that I really want to go to. And it feels like that is the energy that you kind of brought. So, so I want to know what do you set out before day one is that what is the energy that you want to cultivate on your sets? So for me, it's important for everybody to, I, I, I know the things I'm good at. And I know the things I need to improve on. But because I know the things I'm really good at, I would love for other people to also know the same thing about themselves. So the team that I have around me 
I try and 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 help bring out the best in them. So, uh, you know, it, on sets there's also the um, the notion where people just go ask the director, ask the director, ask the director, ask, and you're like, whoa, 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 mm. whoa. You can't also be asking me what sandwiches we're eating for lunch. Eh, 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 yeah. eh, eh. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. So I got to a point where I was like, okay, so everybody just likes this as the director thing. They don't apply themselves. So if there's a problem, they don't first try and figure out how to solve it. Instead, the solution is call the director. So mm -hmm. then I, got, I think by day two of filming, I was like, whoa. I started, I started changing how I speak. So when somebody comes to me with a problem, I listen to the problem and, 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 and acknowledge the problem. And I, mm. then I'd go, so how do you think we should solve it? Mm. And then they'd be like, um, because they'd only thought as far as Steph Coming was going to tell you. Okay. Yeah. 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 So then I'd be like, wait, so when I'm more big, how do we, what do you think will help us move forward with this? Then I started seeing people going, now the, the, the ball is in their court. Now it's their responsibility to fix it. And you... The, the, the solutions they'd come up with are solutions I wouldn't have even come up with. Where you're like, hey, hey, that's a, yeah, do that, do that. Then it got to a point where they weren't even coming to ask me. They'd come and tell me that there was this problem, but this is how we, sort, we sorted it out. Am I okay with it or do I want to add to it or do I want to take away from it? And I'd be like, oh, no, as long as it's sorted, do you, boo? You've done, you've done your job. That's so great. Okay, okay. So on Still Baby Mamas, I know that you guys took a year and a half to raise the funding for it, is what I read. Um, yeah. And I want to speak about money because it would, be such an, it would be such an injustice to have black females talk about the entertainment and media and television and film industry and not speak about money, uh, mm -hmm. particularly budgets. Um, I want to know, was it challenging for people to put their money behind two women? Um, and... And do you find that, the second part of my question is, um, do you find that the, there's a very big slant in terms of big budget things go to male filmmakers and creators and sort of softer budgets, um, more, you know, uh, what's the word? Less risky. Less, that's it. That less risky projects go to the female directors um, because, no, oh, you know, you can mess up five, ten mil. But once, once we start going above that, now yes. we're talking real money, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. and maybe your delicate hands are not the ones to, to handle that. Look, I think that has been the big question, the biggest dilemma since the beginning of time. Mm. What can we trust women with and what can't we trust them with? So to ask to answer your question about raising money, it was it's 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 so hard to raise money for film uh, because South Africa does not have a studio system compared to Hollywood. Yeah. However, we compare ourselves a lot to Hollywood. I don't know why, because we our system is based on we independent filmmakers, mm. which is um, highly subsidized by government. And also highly funded by government bodies, but that is a loan. So I'll say, so, so to simplify it for, for mm. other people who want to think about funding films, you have the DTI where you yeah. can get a tax rebate. So it, they, they've got different criteria, criteria um, mm. but they can fund, I think, up to 50% of your budget as a rebate, which means the money must be spent in South Africa on South Africans, right? And then the other money is money that you have to pay back that you can find from either the NFEF, the IDC, the, there's many other bodies, yeah. but you have to pay it back. There's the false notion that the money doesn't get to be paid back. So people sometimes in filmmaking think, Oh no, the budget was five million. That means yo, they got five million. It's like ah, uh -uh. we got five million. Well, the budget was five million. Yeah, maybe between thirty-five and fifty percent of it is from the DTI, um, and then the rest 
must go back. So yeah. I need for people to go into cinema to watch the film. I need for the TV channels to buy the film so that I can pay back the IDCs of this world and whoever else put in money. Mm. What would be ideal in South Africa would be for us to look at bringing private investors into filmmaking. But private investors who are willing to, you know, who have enough money to, to understand that it's not money you're going to make back in three months. It's a long game. And mm. there's a high chance that you will also lose a lot of your money, especially when you're working on the lower budget films. Yeah. And by lower, I mean five, six million and below. Um, because not, it's not always where they'll get an international distributor because you can't afford an international name to attach to it. So the, 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 there's also a science behind it that I think when we went into it, we were like, oh, okay, we'll just get into films. And then you realize, whoa, yeah, what? What am I signing away? Am I signing away mm -hmm. my liver here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so there's that part. Um, and, 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 and like you rightly say, there is the notion that I mean, we were told, I kid you not, I wish I, I wish I was kidding, at the very early stages of Baby Mamas, that maybe you should get a different director, and maybe you should get a different writer, maybe you should, we were in boardrooms, so people would look at me and live, like, live, 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 just yeah, tell no, live, just live. you to your face. Yeah. yeah. They'll look yeah. at the two of us and be like, maybe you guys need to get a producer. And I'd be like, oh, but we, we have a producer. And they'd be like, who? I'm like, oh, my boss, Sal. There we go. <laughs> She's sitting right here, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? Oh, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, have you considered who, who's going to be the director? So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's this great director, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, uh, we mean like someone with more experience. And so was like, it unbelievable for them to see two young black women sitting in the boardroom being like, fund us, we're making it. That is who, that is the creative team. This is it. You are looking at it. Th there was a lot of rooms we went into where they were just like, yeah, mm. and, and when we did find the one room or two rooms where we'd get support, we ran with that. Uh, and I think there were a lot of times where, I mean, it, it, a, it, it, it hurts your ego mm. because again, you have to answer questions that guys don't have to answer when they walk into a room, you know, there's mm. very few guys out there who get asked, how many films have you done before their main uh, film? There's, if they even get asked, but when I feel be yeah. And I'm a yeah. You get questions where you're like, sure. Where you when where you do start questioning whether am I the right person for this job or am I not? You know. Mm -hmm. So we we did get asked that way. So I was like, yeah, maybe you must get another producer. And she's like, but uh, she's the producer. Get another director. Like, yeah, my director. You 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 constantly having to convince people of your skill set. You're constantly having to convince people that you can deliver. Um, and when you do get your champions, I mean, you stick with them and you run with them, but there's very few of them out there. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, so then on that, is that like, how do you then keep yourself as a creative fed? Um, what, 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 what is the things that Stefina does? Like, I know what I do. What, what is it that you do to keep yourself fed in a creative world that is a not designed for you? You B, no one has really walked this path, mm, mm, mm. Um, which is why I'm so proud. I'm just like, I'm proud of us, girl. You know what I mean? Like, no one, no one has walked. So, so what do you do to feed yourself spiritually in that way? Um, so there's, there's various things. I think the, the beauty in being able to write, direct, produce, sing, dance, whatever, the, the creative, um, however you exp express your creativity, mm. helps. It helps that if I'm feeling frustrated with the producing, I know I've got the writing. So I'll write a poem, I'll write a film, I'll write a short story and get it out of my system. 
um, if I'm feeling frustrated with the directing, I know I'll go into producing. I'll go look at budgets. Yeah. Just to help me appreciate each and every single thing that I am able to do. Um, but I think mostly what I do is I've found the greatest peace in supporting other people's work. Um, I've found, you know, for clapping the loudest for others and wishing them well and supporting them, watching a show when you can, um, buying a book where you can. That has brought me the biggest peace because it, it, it opens up my mind and my heart and my spirit to new worlds that, that I might not be open to on my own or not, not be exposed to on my own. Mm -hmm. So exploring other people's art and supporting other people's art and creativity um, has, gives me the biggest piece. So that leads me then to ask you about collaboration because I feel, so why this was so important to me with SA Creatives and all of that, I was like, you know what, if we're going as black female creatives, I feel that we're kind of operating silos with the, oh, maybe some of the men, as, but like we don't we didn't necessarily know each other before this, right? We might know each other's work and have heard the name, yeah. um, but we don't know each other, which is so it's it's such a pity. And so, what made me really motivated to kind of have this show and and have this platform is that now we are even more isolated than we ever were before. Oh, if yeah. I was ever going to run into you at Royale and have a drink and talk it's now not going to happen. So oh, yeah. it's, the steps are even more important for us to have a conversation like this. So, so that's why for me, it was important to reach out and to do these conversations, um, which are going to be happening at 6 p.m. every Wednesday, by the way, everybody is seeing it. Um, well, well is that, what's, 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 your, what's your take on collaboration and how do we solve this problem? Like, how, how do, what's, what's the steps? I know it's a big question, but how do we solve this problem of us all operating separately? Because it is through the support of each other that, that we can actually grow and that my voice is amplified by your voice. Yeah. That like, you know? Yeah. Mm. I, I think that's a, a collab collaboration is extremely important in, in what we do. Um, I think the very essence of our industry is based on collaboration. Mm -hmm. You cannot do anything on your own. You can't make a film on your own, right? But where women are concerned, I think the working in silos, I think it's a, it's a woman thing, but it's also, I think, a lot of the black creatives are in silos. We don't always know each other personally. Mm -hmm. And when we do we don't always reach out to each other um for fear of sharing you know either you're sharing your idea or just sharing your pain maybe you stuck with something you're scared to you know pick up a phone and call sunny and go yo sunny mr mm. you fear being judged because we are operating in a system that already judges us so harshly so we go into the world expecting that it doesn't matter where I go, I'll still get judged. So you know what, let me just suffer on my own or let me yeah. just figure this out on my own. Um, and it, it, it hurts because we could essentially be so much further, so much further if we were each other's champions, if we were each other's loudspeakers, you know, Mm. Um, because sometimes it's not just most times it's not about me and Sal making a film it's the fact mm. that Sunny is able to make a film and other female producers and directors are able to make the film it, it's, a, it's about us instead of producing one film directed by a woman a year in the country moving it to 10 per, per year that would be amazing oh. Mm -hmm. So we need to, we, collaboration is, is, is an essential, essential um, part of what we, we do. You look at people like Ava DuVernay. Yeah. And yeah. when she realized she's at, whenever they say black female director, 
excuse me, she was the name that would pop up and mm. she was the name that was being called for work. Mm. She realized that, whoa, but I can't direct everything. And actually, I don't want to direct everything because there's other black female directors out there that need the work, but who are super talented, but nobody's taking notice of them because they don't have the platform that I have. Yeah. And so yeah. she then, when she did get the, the platform, she decided to hire just uh, a, a whole, I think it was 80 or 90% uh, of, of women directors. And those women then went on to direct a plethora of other things, but she yeah. was able to, to be that loudspeaker for them. Here so let, whole... let me jump in there and ask you then, have you ever had to then align yourself with a male voice in order to amplify your voice because that's who gets listened to in boardrooms and pitches in whatever it may be problem go with nakis tabon there it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is my problem and and the, the 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 woman i work with is is she'll never admit it but she's just as stubborn. She's in a more sweeter voice than I yes. do. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I don't know how many times we've been told, no, guys, why don't you bring in uh, a, a guy on, on t- as, as in your company? And it's like, guys, we can't also just bring in people just for the sake of bringing in people. For optics. There must be synergies at work. There must be, you know, we must know each other. We must like working with each other. But you also cannot continue to say, I'll only give you work if, as if I'm not alone, as if I'm not enough, as if whatever I bring to the table is not enough. Is less you than, know? yeah, yeah. So that's my my issue with aligning Yes, I, I, and I'm not saying people shouldn't do it. Mm. I'm no, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you need to do what works for you. So we operate in a very different and in a very difficult industry. Our industry is tiny. Um, it's very small. We only yeah. have but a number of soapies, and that's our main. That's what's driving our visual entertainment industry, right? The mm. soapie. Yeah. And then yeah. per year, I, I don't even think we're making more than 20 films. We're lucky if we get to about 15 a year yeah. of films that will end up in cinema that are locally produced. We're lucky. Um, so our variables are very different. And they also very, yeah, we, we, we're working off of a very small table. And I feel like there's, unfortunately, where we're at, there isn't much of a plan there isn't much of a plan to bring more people in. If you're not personally, if I, as Stefina Zwane, am not personally advocating for Sunny or for another uh, female creative, mm. nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. And, and, and it is so important, just to come back to your collaboration question, it is so important to collaborate. I'm one of those people who, if I'm available and you call me and I'm not sick and I don't have A, B, and C to deliver or deadlines, I'll come through. Yeah, I'll come through. If you need advice, I'll give you that advice. But I'll also be the one who there'll be guys that I call or girls that I call just for advice. To go, I don't know how to do this. I need this done, but I really I don't know how to do it. Can you help? And sometimes people are open to helping. Sometimes they're not. So we do need to get to a point as a country to move our whole industry forward. We need to get to a point where we do collaborate. Where but because the cake, the piece of the pie is so small, we all feel like we're competing for the small piece. So yeah. therefore, if I call Sunny and I'm like, Sunny, I need, I, I, I'm a director and I need to direct something. Can you, or just put me as a standby director there on your, it, Sunny will just think, no, but I want that job. So yeah, no, cool. I'll let you know, babe. <laughs> and then it never happens. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to be, we need to, we need to be deliberate deliberate we need to be deliberate with with bringing with 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 our collaboration because i promise you it's the only way we move forward it's how nollywood does it Mm. they've moved forward and broken records and shattered glass ceilings just from collaboration 
It's how Hollywood has done it. It's how Bollywood has done it. We cannot move forward if we don't co- collaborate. You know, I get a lot of, um, I won't call it slack, I'll call it feedback. Yes. <laughs> On, uh, is that I always staff up my writing rooms with black females. And even though they might not be the strongest or more experienced writers, is that like, I got a chance, so I need to give somebody else a chance, right? Mm. Which makes, mm. if, I'm, if I'm a head writer on a project, it makes my job harder, it does, right? But that's the pill you have to swallow in order to give more people um, an opportunity. So when you say deliberate, I feel like that's like the most important thing is that you have to be like, this room will be staffed with this many black women. We need to be so pedantic about the numbers and like this is the, I will not go less than like out of like three out of five you know yeah, yeah. um yeah. in that it, it, and that's super important but what's also super important in that conversation as well is it's also important to add that if I do bring in four uh women writers onto the writers writing team out of a team of eight Mm. it is okay if they're not perfect well this is, this is what you, think. you dropped pearls earlier when you said i don't have to know everything you don't yeah so even yeah. the people you bring on board they, they just who said they must be perfect because we celebrate mediocrity when it comes from abomchi daiga we just I as long as I'm with the cool Asilmi, Asilmi, Asilmi. Just, mm. we're just calling it what it is you mm. know mm. if it's a guy who makes that mistake yeah Uban, uh, uh, man, I'm sure he didn't mean to why can't we give the same excuse when it's a woman but uh, oh no she she messed that up oh man I'm sure she didn't mean to mm. and then be the uh, and maybe Ugel also didn't know how to do the thing right, but now we're able to correct and say, this is how you did it. But in actual fact, Molana, this is how we prefer for it to be done. But also yeah. be aware that you might get to a different place and a different production, and they would also do it differently. We need to be okay with making mistakes because I find that you stop enjoying what you're doing. You stop being creative, just trying to do things perfectly. And then mm-hmm. in the process, you, you know, we're scared to make mistakes as black women. Yeah. Because we understand what's at stake. If, you, if I make a mistake on set, yo, Itaba will never brief another black woman again. Well, I, I will take... Can you see all the black women development? Women. This is what it does. Yes. Mm. So for me, I've learned to say, no, I'm supposed to make mistakes. Because how else am I going to learn? Why is it that others are allowed to make mistakes, but I'm not? No, mm. guys. If you're wrong, because sometimes people want you to make a decision now, and you're like, ah, I'm not sure whether to go red or blue. No, 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 give us the answer now. But if it's wrong, if it's, like, yeah, if it's wrong, and the answer was blue, then we'll change it to blue, hey? Yeah. It's cool. We're yeah. not dealing, we're not hard surgeons, guys. It's not a matter of life and death. So we need to be kinder to ourselves. I hear you. I completely hear you. You you mentioned earlier that um, about the industry being such a small cake. And so, you know, because because of that, the collaboration is difficult. But what I really want to ask you about is is sort of you've just made the move to bomb commercials. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and <laughs> I did a stint at bomb and it was absolutely amazing. It was like I learned so much there. But like. Have you, I want to know from you because you've done two feature films, you've worked in television and now you're doing commercials and it seems like the trend from what we can observe is that as a, as a filmmaker, you have to make commercials in order to eat. Um, do you find that because you cannot live on feature films, can you sustain, can you sustain a career, a living, you know, a lifestyle? just on feature films and doing what you do. And, and I know the same applies in the writing room, for example. If mm-hmm. I just want to write drama series, 13-part drama series, 24-part mm-hmm. drama series, it becomes increasingly difficult. Mm-hmm. So you kind of need to go into soapy so yes. that you can make the money. Pay bills. Yeah. You've got to pay, pay the bills. Um, so, so I want to speak about your, your journey into commercials and, and what's that been like. So I, when I joined 
bomb as 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 a commercials director i think it was a it was a childhood dream i've always loved doing the thought of 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 doing commercials but again it's one of those things i didn't know how to do it i didn't know where to even start right mm-hmm. so eventually years later when i eventually end up at, at the door and and that door gets open for me i was like yeah hallelujah hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> yes um and i think so you you asking in terms of paying bills i think a lot of directors to pay bills don't necessarily do commercials because i think the commercial space is still also very few people in there i think a lot of directors to pay bills end up in soapies and end up in drama series mm. um there's there's very few especially of our kind in commercials um yeah so i think people still to pay bills they 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 directors still opt to go the soapy route or the drama series route which i mean there's nothing wrong with that you need to pay bills what commercials have done for me mm. is they've allowed me to be on set more because i do love film and or making films but i also i love the idea of creating so commercials mm. allow us to almost to exercise and stretch that muscle of because every commercial is different uh every pitch you on is very different to your last um so it stretches you 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 it forces you to think 360 about what you're doing from this week to next week so if you're on a job two weeks from now or two, for two weeks right now two weeks later you're on a completely different job that requires completely different things so it stretches your imagination it stretches your creativity and for me it's allowed me to play in a way i never thought i would be able to um and that's what i love about it but it's also because it's so highly competitive there is also unless you're one of the top commercial directors you're not also always shooting either mm So unless you're one of the top names who get briefed sometimes 3 4 briefs a day I'm not that me I'm just a beginner <laughs> in this space so I'm yes, still yes. navigating it and and learning as I go and understanding mm. how it works and appreciating whatever it is that I do get and giving my all when when I do get a job um to do but for me it's it's been mostly to just stretch myself as a filmmaker um yeah to play with 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 ideas and thoughts that i i might not be able to in film yeah or even in dramas okay so for me that's what it's 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 become eating for film <laughs> and you get to work your muscle more yes. often Yeah. which is which is such a blessing because you're only as like you're only as good as how fit you are you yeah. know you got to be writing fit shooting fit set fit constantly yeah. yeah that's so great yeah okay we don't have a lot of time left so i want to do some rapid fire questions and i'm so sad cuz <laughs> so much um <laughs> we didn't even talk but, about the psa yet oh my girl God. this is the thing tell us tell us about your psa please that you have just shot with a female dop which is so yeah. important that's yeah. the other thing that's the other real part like technical skills for females yeah. Yeah. um yeah i i feel like females sometimes were pushed into production you know and into money and and ledgers and invoices and not mm-hmm. encouraged into creative and technical so tell us about your psa how that came about um and and everything uh so with, the psa was called again uh and it's a poem i'd written last year uh when we nene had had her body had been found and and i remember that day like it was yesterday because my whole office uh, it was me sal in my office and our production oh. manager moni we were devastated because it was just Absolutely. it had been too much at that day we even left the office early like 1 yeah. o'clock when the news broke. i remember that day as well so it's so visceral oh. in my mind yeah we all just we started packing and we just left 
and I got home and I was just in tears and I was by myself here at home and I just after crying for so long and trying to figure out how do we solve this and I I still don't have a solution I to to you know to just try and calm myself down I, I started writing this poem called again mm-hmm. and recently when when Tsokhofato Pule's body was found I was going through my notebook and I found this poem and I was like, oh my God, it's happened again. Mm. And I read the poem again and it was still relevant. And I, I was just like, this is sad. So then I started sharing it. I wrote a little something on the side and then I started sharing it with, with just people in my contact list. Mm. And one of them was my, my producer, my commercials producer. And he read it and was like, we need to put this into film. And I was like, ah! Okay, I wasn't really thinking of it like that. For me, it was just a poem. I just wanted you to read, and if you abuse people, please stop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing my part. I was just yeah. sharing it to, with the guys I know, you know. And he was like, "No, no, no, let's let's do it." And yeah, and then I ended up sharing it with with uh, Haupi, who mm. was who's the DOP, and she also was like let's turn this into something visual please 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 and and we were fortunate in that you know the bomb family and the bosses were like yay let's do it we're behind you a lot of the people that worked on it were worked for for free we all Mm. mostly did it for free or for hands and (laughs) and i think everybody just came in there knowing exactly what needed to be done but also understanding the importance of raising awareness against gender-based violence. Yes. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of having to read every single day of a woman or a young girl or a baby or a child that's being killed or raped or abused. I, I'm, I'm just yeah. done. I'm done. So, yeah, so that's how the PSA ended up happening. And we, I mean, we had Mushidi do the voice for it. Mushidi Mutseho, and that okay. was amazing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's taken a life of its own and we, we just wanted to, from the bottom of our hearts, bottom of our hearts, wanted to raise awareness and to say, guys, kindly, please stop killing us. I think it's such a beautiful piece of work. It's on my Insta stories. If anyone wants to check it out, I also really appreciate the type of filmmaking that you that you've chosen to like implement and the style and choices you've made. Is that it's not it's not grotesque. It's not shocking. It's not there to it's not there to to shock you. We're, we're past shock now. No, we you passed know. it. I can pa- feel. I don't want to do the because usually we, we we put makeup on women and we show them with a blue eye. And I was like, no. No, no, no. Um, we're over that stage because yeah. that doesn't scare them anymore. That doesn't, I, I just want you to think, I want you to realize that you as a man and as a boy and as a guy are at some level responsible for women dying in our country. 100%. 100%. Well, kudos to you, more power to you, more power to your bomb family. You made that piece of work. It is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Okay, for the last four minutes, you're not allowed to think about this for too long. You have a minute for each, okay? Okay. What's your biggest win? Yo. My biggest win. This is rough. I don't know. I think I've got a couple of biggest wins where where industry is concerned. And I think making our very first feature was one of them because it opened doors for the next one and uh, which then became baby mamas and i think being part of bomb commercials and and you know working in that space in the commercial space has been a privilege for me biggest loss biggest loss hmm <laughs> i can't think i can't think i can't think I'll be honest with you, every time I walk out of a pitch and I didn't wow everyone, I'm like, oh, I need a bottle of something. Yeah. To take away the sting. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I think I, I, I take the losses as, as learning. Mm-hmm. So I always go, okay, so I didn't get that one. What did I do wrong? Sometimes you didn't do anything wrong. That it was just... It was just not your time or they just didn't believe in you as a woman. I mean, there's so many factors. 
it's it's not your fault it's not your fault get life that's it i yeah. i want to thank you so much so so much for your time i want to thank everyone who's joined us um i wanted to get this in before this i don't know if it kicks me off in an hour ne pressure manja i'm feeling stressed um <laughs> well, thank you so talk. much stefina i feel like Yeah <laughs> but I want to really thank you for your time and and your contribution not only um to the industry which is what you do every day as you're living but also to like the voice of black women you started a black woman owned company you made black woman run feature films now you make black female run commercials and it's it's <laughs> it's so inspiring it's so great um and so I want to thank you so much for giving us your time today I really appreciate it and keep on and we're behind you. Thank you so much that it was a real 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 honor and a pleasure to talk to you and thank you for everybody who joined. I I don't know me my pressure is always who's going to listen to us. <laughs> right? <laughs> But I knew someone did. So thank you guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We really thank appreciate it. Thank you so much for everyone who joined who tuned in and thank you so much for all the support. Yeah. Um please check out the the PSA Share yes. it and reshare it. Share it with your family. Share it with friends. Share it on social media. Go wild with it. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you, guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, six pm. Hashtag <laughs> rewriting the script. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.